winning the Delano Pole Award. And car number nine is Arto Kakinen. Kakinen's Gessler having a bit of a rough time so far this year in race trim because Nietzsche, the biggest crowd draw here by far, on the outside of the front row. Luciano Savarol is without his regular teammate. Uh, Yulian Asova and Davina Henton, great qualifying efforts, along with Scott Stoiler, who seems to have found some speed out of his alert Inglesby. Chris Johans as well. Adrian Dever, Leonid Roderick, about where we expected them. Rossini, great qualifying effort from the Cariola winner. Kevin Dwyer continues to impress. Lewis Kingston, 14th in the Manicor. Packer Carroll, his teammate, is 18th. And Vladimir Simonov is a third car for the Cats of Engineering team. No surprise to see him get a promoter's option. Davenport and Anderson looking strong. Paul Lyons is in car number six because Jacob Carter is not clear to drive. We'll get into more on that in a little bit. 43 cars were actually entered for this race. However, only 42 will start as Mikko Rantanen's car caught fire at the end of first practice. The team didn't have a backup car, so car 770 was withdrawn. Carpenko, you see there, is the first of the, the, the lead car for Togliatti. The only independent trophy car there. Disastrous qualifying from Rocketta here at his team's home race. Melanie Klavano was given a grid penalty, sent to the back of the grid after a couple of collisions she caused during the Cariola Grand Prix. And there you see Rantanen listed as a DNQ. Even though he was entered, we, we hope he'll be back for the round of Germany. Here is Kakinen getting a great start. Kuznetsov was sleeping on that one. The 15, terrible start from Kuznetsov. He didn't lose more than one spot yet. Uh, are we going to get through turn one? Looks like everyone got through their foes. Oh, kicking, uh, kicking up some grass there. As uh, Savarol swinging it wide. Now this is uh, an airport runway course. And uh, you may notice that the fastest line around the track isn't necessarily what you would normally consider to be the fast line around this track. Uh, a lot of it is actually just finding where all the bumps are and avoiding them. Um, there's, a, there's a turn towards the end of the track where actually going around the outside has uh, actually been quicker. Uh, for most people, here's Yuri Golubov. We're looking at him in the 62 car. Oh, Cameron Taylor sideways into Quiggles Jr. Golubov all over that car, saving it, and he's into the side of Lev Vladimirovich. Pulls in, and Hannah Percy, the Dash Cup regular. Uh, big disappointment for Percy to get in trouble so early, but looked like everyone got away with that except for Quiggles. I don't know, even Quiggles Jr. looks like he got away with it because there he is in the 99 car. So that was uh, looked like Cameron Taylor might have just hit one of those bumps and kicked it sideways. Oh, uh, we got one of the Toyotis in trouble, and it's their lead car, the, the one that counts for independence points, Vitaly Karpinko, uh, the man who's uh, done most of Toyotis dry, um, driving for Toyotti in, um, in the series. Melanie Klavano was sent to the back of the grid after uh, that collision with Greg Woodard at the Cariola Grand Prix. Klavano was livid after that penalty was announced. And... Uh, uh, Melanie said that her goal was to beat the 41 and, quote, put him back in his place. Bit feisty from Melanie. That's a bit unlike her from what we've seen. Uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, he is the big crowd draw. Uh, I can't mention how, um, how, much, how much of the local crowd here is in support of Kuznetsov. And really, anyone that's met him uh, would support him anyway. He's got a large fan base even outside of Russia. He's very amiable, very personable. And uh, uh, genuinely, not, uh, generally one of the nicer drivers in the field. Uh oh, Flavino in trouble. I think she's got a puncture on that car because I don't think she'd be pitting after one lap uh, in that car number two. So uh, Melanie's day has gone from bad to worse already. Adrian Dever on the Haas Manufacturing car doing battle with Scott Bates in that very distinctive maroon custom car century. Bates is having a pretty strong year so far in that 88 car. No wins yet. But both Bates and teammate Ian Cooper have been quick on and off this weekend. And their long run pace has actually been quite staggering. So I think uh, when we get later in the year, especially in some of the oval tracks, I think some both these guys, both the EFR cars might suddenly catch fire. Uh, metaphorically, not literally, hopefully. Scott Bates in this 88 car, he's about to lose his spot to Roderick, but he's not really fighting it all that hard, as you see. He's just uh, slots in line and is and uh, he's got Kevin Dwyer and Greg Woodard all over the back of him. And here is Kurt Pliskin in the 16, and, Aless and Alessandro Rossini, the Cariola winner. Battle for, battle for 12. Now here's the turn I was saying earlier. Fast line is a little bit around the outside, as uh, a little bit around on the right side, because there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a bump right on the inside of that turn, which has um, made it not exactly the, uh, not exactly made the inside the best place to be. Oh, Rossini, uh, this. 
front straight's pretty wide, but, well, the racing line is only so wide. Doesn't matter how wide you make the racetrack. As uh, Kirk Plissken going around the 88 car of Scott Bates. Oh, Rossini thought about it. Looks like he opted not to. Bates shuts the door on the 16. And and now we got the two Lynx cars doing battle. The Sova car 10, Henton car 11. Uh, you can tell the difference between them from far away by looking at that front valence. Uh, oh, Henton going backwards. That's what I was um, a little bit w uh, was wondering about, is if the Lynx cars actually do have pace or if they just uh, threw in, s or if they just got lucky in qualifying and just threw some really strong laps out because the, uh, this year's Lynx car, it does not look like it's been, um, it does not look like it's uh, a very well handling car. They've got the same engines that are in the car on the pole though, so with a bunch of long straightaways here, uh, now you do kind of wonder uh, how bad the handling in that car actually is. Um, so, in other words, I'm saying that the engine might be uh, part of the reason they qualified so well. Greg Woodard in this 41 car in the Lycoya. Uh, he's having a, uh, he's, he's Lycoya's golden-haired angel, so to speak. He's Lycoya's factory driver, and with his talent, it's not hard to see why. Dan McKay is in the uh, second Maximus car, full-time Maximus car. This 95 car. Maximus is having a bit of a problem here because Maximus has been entering three different car numbers for the regular cars, and it's made um, uh, my job over here a little bit a little bit uh, hectic trying to keep track of which of their cars is uh, full time and which isn't. But it's cars 94 and 95 for them this week. Kazuyama will be back. We are here for the round of Germany. Here is Nisova in car 10, trying to hold off Adrian Devereaux in the seven. And uh, Devereaux in that seven car. Some people, uh, I think uh, the general consensus around the paddock is that Devereaux is, is uh, quite possibly the most naturally talented driver in the field. But um, don't, tell, uh, don't tell some people. Namely, that guy in that orange car behind Devereaux, Leonard Roderick, who I think will um, might uh, dispute that. But <laughs> be that as it may, Devereaux going by Yulian Asova in the 10. Uh, Devereaux won the season opener for the third year in a row, but surprisingly he hasn't won anything since. Um, but uh, I would, I'd be surprised if that uh, stays the uh, stays the same, or rather if Devereaux doesn't score another one before the year's out. As um, Adrian Devereaux, very much known for, oh, Devereaux getting a little, getting a little bit, a uh, little bit of a push in that seven car right there, almost into the side in a Sova. Devereaux normally. Uh, He's not going to give up that easily, uh, that's for certain. Here's Zelda Ashby in the 55, bringing that car in early. Yeah, that looks scheduled. That doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the 55 car. Ashby having a, had a terrible qualifying effort. Um, and here's Paul Lyons in car number six. Jacob Card uh, showed up here at the track. You notice that's why the rookie stripes are on the back of that six car. And Jacob Card's name is still over the door. But uh, Paul Lyons was on hand to drive the car because Jacob Card was not medically cleared to drive. Uh, we're not quite sure exactly why. Uh, we weren't able to get a straight answer out of Lenard International as to, as to why uh, Lyons was given the nod. Uh, especially when there were so many uh, hot off the Carriola Grand Prix. There were so many drivers that, uh, that were on hand to give that car um, give that car a solid run that would... Uh, Really couldn't make the trip back to the United States, but Paul Lyons was dragged in to, the, to drive the six car. And Lyons has actually been giving it a decent run. Didn't qualify very well. Uh, Lyons, uh, his career uh, seemingly died a couple of years ago, but then it resurrected, uh, really, with this with this Leonardo International deal. Lev Vladimirovich pulls in, and car 82 has been in the pits. And uh, here is car 10 again, Yulina Sova, the battle for fifth is raging oh roderick's got a great exit great exit from roderick and he's gonna and he's gonna try to use the 10 as a pick to get around adrian Devereux. oh Devereux might get squeezed in behind the 10 and yasova trying to give Devereux a bit of a hard time and roderick's gonna have all sorts of momentum and he's gonna go right on by nasova and here comes kevin dwyer in that gold number eight car into the picture the kevin dwyer that uh, golden oh nasova off the course Nasova feeling the pressure, and I wonder if the Lynx cars just are burning their tires off way faster than everyone else. The Devereaux has gone, has gone by. Kevin Dwyer in the 8 car. And not quite yet. 
Kevin Dwyer, that eight car is uh, not exactly been, been the greatest fan of this track, but um, he's giving it a pretty good run so far. Quiggles Jr. in the 99 has been into the pits. The Sealander having a very difficult weekend so far, and his race hasn't started off all that hot either. Here is Stoidler now doing battle with Rod. Much the same thing. Roderick seems that it looks like Stoidler might have uh, been running on the inside there most of the weekend. And uh, I think, uh, well, <laughs> Roderick just blew right past. Oh, he's off too. Stoidler. Scott Stoidler, who was, um, if uh, if there were going to be three full-time cars per team, uh, Alan Hodges uh, might have picked Stoidler for his third car. Either Stoidler or David Krikorian, which are both interesting choices for... Um, Oh, Pliskin squeezing the Sova out a little bit wide. These two, a little bit of a history there, which uh, it's a little bit complicated, but um, I'll let I'll let that lie. But the Sova and Pliskin, the Sova lets the 16 go. I don't think I think the Sova must know that her tires are absolutely shot at the moment. <clears throat> or ah, the Sova looks like she uh, let Pliskin go by to get a better exit. Uh, coming into the chicane here, she does so. Pliskin is going to try to catch up to that 10 car. Now the uh, the uh, well, Pliskin is not going to win a drag race when he's running on those uh, very large curbs like that, and he's going to get stuck behind the 10 for a little bit, for a little while longer. He's got a great run, and uh, I think he's going to be able to take the spot here. Uh, Greg Woodard, Scott Bates, Alessandro Rossini are going to be all in Pliskin's mirror very soon if he's not able to clear the 10 car, who is. Nasova actually is jamming traffic up a little bit. The 11, Davina Henton, uh, I do believe has Henton has disappeared into the background seemingly because Henton, uh, in that 11 car, Henton's not having a very good run so far. Here's Greg Woodard, Lycoya's golden-haired angel. I call him golden-haired angel rather affectionately. Woodard is, uh, it's really not hard to see why he's Lycoya's main factory driver because Woodard, Fantastic talent in his own right. Scott Bates and Alessandro Rossini got to take a three wide. Woodard bails out of that. He wants to avoid a crash. And here comes Ian Cooper in the Allison Becker car. As uh, Kuznetsov is about to lose. Uh, he's in third right now. So Kuznetsov actually has been able to hold on. Kekkonen has disappeared into the distance. As has Luciano Salvarol. We do believe the 60 car of Gaspar D'Souza has hit the pit lane. So Gaspar D'Souza, who started... Uh, that actually had a decent qualifying effort. Looks like both the Black Diamond cars are on alternate strategies. Um, here is Kuznetsov now trying to hold off Adrian Devereaux a little bit more. Devereaux swinging by on the on the right. I don't think Kuznetsov is going to be able... No, Kuznetsov I don't think is going to be able to hold uh, Devereaux off for too much longer. Too much longer. And yep, there, he, there goes Devereaux by Stoidler even entering the mix. Kurt Pliskin in the 16. Running an 8th right now in this 16 car as uh, he's trying to catch he's trying to catch up to oh oh smoke coming out of the back of that car the engine is gone that's definitely an engine oh whoa oh, oh Rossini into the back of Pliskin really not in many places for him to go as Henton and Lyon side by side there along with the 84 Davin that's Chris Davenport having a pretty good run in and that's Carlos Ricchetta who has absolutely stormed his way through the field so far so the Colombian impressing Davina Henton is uh, going to be rather depressed about this run so far, and quite honestly, Henton's morale has not been very high all week, and in fact, most of this year, uh, as Lyons just goes right around Henton before they even make it to the break zone, so um, uh, Henton's uh, confidence is not going to be boosted here either, as Pliskin is getting a little bit in the way, but he's not really any... Oh, oh! Spun in his own oil, I think, in front of the 19 or more! Oh, and Benoit Vukler piles right in. I think Pliskin spun in his own oil because he just looped that thing suddenly. Right when he put the power back on and more, nowhere to go. Super best friends from the Cariola Grand Prix. Lewis Kingston and Packer Carroll are now doing battle for 21st. 17 car has gone backwards a little bit and so has the 18. But at the same time, uh, these boys are uh, playing, they're playing nice with each other and... These are uh, two guys who we've, who uh, some people have affectionately called Team Enforcer because these are more or less two of the enforcers out on the racetrack and they're teammates. And a lot of people expected that to end in fireworks, uh, but then honestly that hasn't been the case. Quite the opposite. These uh, 
These two guys are giving. These are one of the best battles on the racetrack, to be quite honest with you. As Carroll trying to get by the, trying to get by Kingston. Kingston squeezing him wide. These are two of the hardest nosed racers out here at the moment. And Kingston is going to let Carroll go. He's not going to risk a crash there. As uh, oh wait, Carroll's pitting. Packer Carroll's bringing that car in. That he must have been called in suddenly, because. Um, I don't think he might have. He would have uh, made that move on the on his teammate. Otherwise, if he wasn't called in at the very last minute, so Packer Carroll throwing the dice on strategy. Luciano Savarol is coming in now. Well, uh, Packer Carroll did pit about a lap early. Devereaux is in on the same on the end of lap seven. Uh, a lot of long straights here, so uh, fuel efficiency not exactly. Uh, uh, this isn't exactly the uh, the easiest track on fuel mileage. Here's the 60 car. Now, he pitted very early. Gaspar D'Souza, the distinctive Cleffer Media car. Cleffer TV, I should say. Black and teal car. Now, and he's right behind Savarol, so I mean, that's going to put him third on the racetrack right now. And D'Souza made an alternate strategy work brilliantly at Brand Tatch when he started last and won the race on a two-stopper. Yamino Tenchi did likewise at uh, Sweden. Granted, Tenchi didn't start last, but um, well, we have seen quite a few uh, races won by someone making uh, less pit, uh, one less stop the rest of the field. But uh, D'Souza, oh wait, Roderick has come out in front of the five car. So that's going to put D'Souza third now that he's gotten by Savarol. So here is the 15 of uh, Kuznetsov, who is going to be, oh, in fourth. This, and that's Devereaux back there in fifth. Ian Cooper making some headway, and Paul Lyons in the sixth car. So Lyons, had pretty, Lyons is having a great race so far. Lyons must have put a really good outlap in because here, well, Adrian Devereaux coming through. Not much of a fight there. Devereaux is a lot braver on the brakes than Kuznetsov is. Casper de Souza in that 60 car. He's got a bit of a lighter fuel load than Roderick, and he's really hounding the four. Uh, and Roderick not going to fight that one. I think Roderick's team must have told him, just let D'Souza go. There's no point in racing him. At least they think that D'Souza might not be in a, on a good strategy and that uh, there's no point in really racing him. Uh, they, they were there for the round of England, were they? Uh, because they, they do know what happened there. D'Souza pulled one, pulled one out of the hat. I, know, I think I think that's a mistake to just let uh, D'Souza go like that. And it's a little surprising that Roderick would, as Luciano Savarol has a run at the Volpe. Not exactly making it stick there, but uh, he's Roderick's not going to have much of a choice but to give that one up. And that's exactly what happened there. Meanwhile, Arto Kekkonen in car number nine is clean sailing for him. As we see the running order on the left side. Uh, you see Stoidler and Ian Cooper in the top ten. Great run for that triple seven car. He's ahead of his teammate Scott Bates. That triple seven car actually stayed out one lap longer than the rest of the field. Uh, so uh, that could be an interesting, um, interesting bit of strategy going on. Henton going backwards. Dan McKay having a decent run considering that uh, Maximus has had a terrible week. And Hannah Percy making the best out of what she has. And Melanie Clavino is still circulating but three laps down. So. There's kind of your run through the field. Arto Kakinen, in the meanwhile, is uh, just got clean sailing. Not a whole lot to look at uh, with Arto Kakinen other than that paint job, which uh, I think this may be the last time we see that paint job in action because he'll be returning to his regular silver car for the round of Germany, which is Gessler's home race. Here is Jacob, uh, the card <laughs> car that was driven by Jacob Card uh, for the, um, every race up until now. Paul Lyons is in that car now, and that's car number six. As Kevin Dwyer is going to take the position from Scott Stoyler in the background, but Lyons really having a career rejuvenation here. So Lyons and must have put a couple of really good laps after his uh, pit stop. As we now look at a hand of Percy and Christian Hans. Percy off the Dash Cup regular, doing very well over there. But uh, right now, the Atlantic driver having uh, a couple of difficulties. Here's Melanie Clavino running all the way back in, uh, well, last. <laughs> I don't think she's going to beat Greg Woodard at this rate, but uh, this has not really gone according to plan for Melanie. Uh, Peter Short there in the 22, and uh, why is there rear end damage in that 55 car, I wonder? Don't, didn't see her hit anything, as this is Gaspar Susan now chasing Arto Kekkonen for the race lead. 
Gaspar D'Souza, Naruto Kakinen doing battle here. Gaspar D'Souza is on a, like I said, he's on a much lighter fuel, but there's a back marker there. That's the 42 car. That's Benoit Vukler. And Tutino have not even bothered to repair the front end. They just pulled it all off. And Gaspar D'Souza is going to take the lead of the race. Arto Kakinen is second, but D'Souza is going to have to pit very soon, if uh, if my math is correct. He won't be able to stay out uh, with his fuel load too long. And uh, that and these uh, tires really seem to come into play uh, not so much early in a run, but later into uh, later into runs. At least that's the way they're designed. Uh, not quite sure that's actually uh, played out, but be that as it may, D'Souza uh, in the 60 car is uh, now the new race leader. Uh, but I wonder if he'll, st but he, uh, he can't possibly stay there. So looking at Azarov, who also is on an alternate strategy, he pitted a uh, little, I think he pitted a, a little bit after Gaspar D'Souza did really, so Ruz Autosport. Now this car, this 07 car, it's a shared independence trophy campaign with Bruce Autosport and Team Thunder, hence why the number is 07 and not Bruce Autosport's usual number 80. And uh, they go by the 74 car, that's Axel Andersen, for 15th place. So Lev Azarov is making it work, and Andersen, the Swede, is, who's, having a, who's having a great uh, rookie year so far, is uh, putting up a pretty good challenge for the Russian. Azarov has um, been sort of been uh, Bruce Autosport's hero. Uh, in qualifying on several occasions. Gaspar Souza in the 60 car. Ah, that's what I thought. Not able to stay out that much longer. He pulls the 60 car in. The Clef for TV car making his second stop. Um, it's a couple laps earlier than I a couple laps earlier than I would have thought he would have come in to be honest. But you know, clearly they know something that I don't as Adrian Devereaux is gonna challenge Leonid Roderick in the four. Nothing um, seen these two uh, go wheel to wheel on quite a few occasions. Adrian, ah, Devereaux gets better entry. Roderick might set him up for a better exit. And yes, he's going to do that coming into that chicane over here. Roderick taking advantage. And is he going to make? Is he going to make it stick? I think he will. Roderick is going to hold on for now, as Devereaux is going to have to. Ah, that curb has been catching quite a few people out. Benoit Vukler here in the 42 is. Somehow managing to get in the way as Doidler goes by Nasova with help from the Frenchman. Nasova gives him a tap and around he goes. That's a sign of appreciation if I ever heard one. Nasova, oh, lions through the, through, somebody at least went through the through the grass over there. But Benoit Vukla in this 42 car is not earning himself uh, a friend in Yulia Nasova at least. And he's holding up Rossini, the Italian. Uh... Scuderia Tutino was uh, celebrating Rossini's Cariola win about as much, um, about as much as Volpe was. So, oh, now he's holding up Tau, and so Tutino is uh, and Rossini still on good terms. Benoit Vukler and Rossini maybe not so much. The Co. I don't think he saw Chris Johans there at all and just moved over right in front of him. Benoit Vukler is. Not earning himself many friends today, let's be honest. Uh, but <laughs> granted, he's, uh, he's some people can argue he's had some problems using the mirrors before. But here's Gaspar de Souza now doing battle with his teammate for position. Currently, he's 27th, and uh, he's well down the order. But we'll have to see how that strategy pans out because he is the slowest car on the racetrack at the moment, other than Benoit Vugler. Luciano Savarol pits right on time. So Savarol in the five. Here is Kakinen staying out one lap longer. I can see Roderick in the background as well in the four. So Kakinen and Roderick pushing it a bit longer as, um, as I kind of expected. Now, one car I'm looking for in particular is the triple seven car. That's Ian Cooper. He seems to be the only guy, the only driver out there that's pushing it uh, two laps longer than the in the norm. I saw a red car in the back. I looked like Kuznets up. Roderick sideways, and Kakinen is slowing. Did he run it out of fuel? Nope, there's too much smoke. Kakinen's blown it up. Something has gone wrong, and the nine car is done. Smoke coming out of the back of that car. A little unfair to say that Arto blew it up himself, but uh, point being, that car is, uh, something's gone wrong with his car, and oh, something's gone 
A miss with the 42 of Benoit Vukler, and it looks like we've had two cars suddenly drop out of the race. It looks like pretty much the same time, but... Uh, now, here's a car I'm really looking at, uh, looking for, is this 777 car, Ian Cooper, because... Uh, this car has been going longer than everyone else on fuel. Now, he owns Clockwork Racing, and Clockwork Racing did that at Sweden. Or at least he's part owner in Clockwork Racing. Is because Nietzsche looks like he's got a problem, and it looks like it's not fuel. It looks like it's a tire. So that's right about when he was about to come into the pit. So a bit lucky for Kuznetsov, but at the same time, and, whoa! Benoit Vukler stalled the middle of the racetrack. Uh, anyways, Kuznetsov, big heartbreak for Kuznetsov because that's a that blown tire is going to cost him a lot of track position, and not only that, but it's going to really dent his hopes of having. A good run here in his home race. Now here's Ian Cooper in the triple seven car, the Allison Becker machine. Oh, uh, we may see a slight paint job change with this car in the near future, but that uh, that aside, uh, he's he's the only car still circulating on the racetrack. Everyone else is pitted for fuel already for the second time. So he's gonna be the last car to make his first stop on tires that are theoretically, anyways, much more worn out than everyone else's. Unless, which is what I suspect is the case, that he has gone for um, saving conserving tires as opposed to conserving fuel. Now, if that's the case, oh, Gaspar D'Souza's strategy might be working after all. There he goes around Adrian Devereaux, and... Oh, wait, Devereaux's got a problem. He's got a big problem. Uh, that was right about when he was... Right about when he would start shifting up and uh, shifting up into third gear, I think. So it looks like Adrian Devereaux might have a gearbox problem, and Devereaux is probably out of the race. Yes, he is. Uh, and here's Melanie Clavin, who's three. Oh, Joe Lennick in trouble. Lennick suddenly slowed in front of Matthias Tab, who's running 22nd. So this was really a good run from Lennick. Um, that's something we've come to expect from Joe Lennick. Very quiet and very solid performing American. Not a whole lot of experience on road racing. He ran just about every, just about everywhere on, on this planet. Really, he raced last year, and it and it paid off because it got him a Team Star USA ride, and he's been making the most of it despite his very limited experience. And now the Triple Seven car is finally coming in, coming into the pits. Uh, I don't think he's going to get uh, be scored as leading a lap, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I wonder how he, I wonder how everything's going to pan out for that car. Now there is Luciano Savarol, who has assumed the race lead. De Souza is second. Roderick third. And there you see Carlos Ricetta is flying through the field. Ian Cooper and Scott Scott Bates must have had a very strong pit stop there uh, in that 88 car. Now the uh, the two two uh, Vernstrom's running well, and Chris Johans dropping through the field like a rock. Uh, and that's going to be a bit disheartening for uh, Chris Johans. Uh, Laverin, the last car on the lead lap, and as you see, Vukler, Pliskin, Karpenko out. As uh, Savarol trying to hold off Gaspar de Souza in that 60 car. Really, Black Diamond Racing is kind of the surprise ticket of this year. They've got uh, de Souza in the 60 car, won the Independence Trophy two years ago, and Zelda Ashby in the 55, both of whom could be title threats if they keep this performance level up. And here is Carlos Raqueta in the 14 car now. Uh, one way to uh, not a, to uh, make your team owner a little bit unhappy is if uh, in your team's home race, you um, don't set a very good flying lap, and then you spin off on your uh, next on the next lap you have. And uh, Raqueta qualified terribly, but he's making up for it in the race. So is Lev Azarov, by the way. Uh, Azarov in this car is running 11th. Now, this is the same car that uh, they brought to Cariala, didn't put it in the race for Cariala, but figured, uh, let's bring it here. Um, this track, you know, it's got a very rough surface, so, sort of like Cariala does. A lot of teams do bring their Cariala cars here. Squiggles Jr. is in trouble. That's not what he wants. I don't see any smoke out of that car, but oh, it's a puncture. Quiggles Jr. has lost a tire on that car, and he's going very slowly around the racetrack. So Quiggles Jr., that, that tire is gone. As uh, Salvarol has gotten the pressures of the uh, pressures of his tires up, but D'Souza's got a pit. So it looks like Gaspar D'Souza's strategy might be good for a podium. Not for... Oh, Carlos Raquetta pits with him, too. So it looks like Raquetta might have been on a similar strategy as Gaspar D'Souza, or at least Cats of Engineering has uh, uh, sort of mimicking whatever D'Souza does. 
both Team Sorry USA drivers having a good day, or at least were having a good day because Alenix out. Cameron Taylor is running in 13. Cameron Taylor, a couple of years ago, really looked out of his depth in this series when he first jumped in, but really, he's, um, right, uh, right now, he's looking very, very dependable, and, uh, Cameron Taylor running solidly in 13 on, um, not entirely on pace alone, but it's, uh, his race pace has been very, very good all, um, all race long, so pat on the back to, uh, Cameron Taylor and Vladimir Simonov. Got in this race with a promoter's option. Not really a surprise that he got it, because Katsev usually does get the promoter's option here, at least they did last year, with their third car. And Simonov has had a very respectable run. He's running in the points in 17th. Points go down to 20th in this series, but Arto Kakinen will get five points anyway because he won the pole. Luciano Savarov brings in the five car on uh, right about when we expected him to, lap 21. Carlos Ricciata now, he's back in 18th, he's holding up Davina Henton and Lewis Kingston, and uh, Ricciata is going to try to defend this, Henton's got a pretty good run coming off the uh, first chicane there, uh, these, two chic these two chicanes here, because um, otherwise that'd be a huge, str oh, Ricciata moved over on the Avenger and they're both off into the tires, oh, that was, Ricciata just moved over on him, that was, that was, that was just mindless, now, Kingston sets him up, sets Ricketta up, and then he sticks it into the right, and Carlos just turns in on him. You can't move her over on someone in a break zone like that. That's a huge smash into that tire barrier. And uh, there were definitely some words exchanged between those two, um, very loudly, probably with several profanities. Um, and if I'm going to uh, bet on... Uh, who's going to win a lightweight title fight between uh, Carlos Ricketta and Lewis Kingston. I'm betting on the Avenger. Thank you very much, but thankfully I'm not a betting man. As Leonid Roderick currently holds the lead as uh, uh, Luciano Savarol has, pit, has uh, hit the five car. And Paul Lyons is still on the racetrack as well, so looks like Roderick and Lyons may have been catching on to what this man Ian Cooper is doing. So, gee, Roderick has, has scored the lead. Uh, Lions has scored third when he came by the line, but technically he's second. Cooper technically third. I'll have to wait and see how pits the, how um, everything shakes out with everyone's final stop. Axel Andersen is running inside the top ten, last year's TM Lights champion. In um, when he was driving, actually for Leonard Roderick's team, so Andersen certainly knows his way around uh, these cars, and uh, really his uh, uh, run in TM Lights definitely showed he has what it takes to compete at this level. Cooper is now. Um, Moved his way up to second, so um, uh, we've had one car in front of him hit the pit lane, but uh, he's really having, he's really doing what uh, I'm a, what uh, I expected him to do. Run a little bit longer. Uh, looks like he's kept the tires in pretty good shape because his race pace has his uh, pace rather hasn't fallen off as much, and that was Roderick that hit the pit lane. So Cooper and Lyons are both were uh, both still circulating at least. Um, they were both being scored as being such by the time they came by the timing show. These timing lines during um, uh, uh, during pit cycles are rather confusing me at the moment because there are about five different pit strategies going on, and there's at least somebody making one of them work. So um, Roderick and D'Souza now doing battle for position. is going to get it. That's going to put D'Souza behind. That should be Savarol, who has the race lead because Savarol's uh, pit stop went off without a hitch. Ashby making a very solid run inside the points. The, uh, oh, getting by Rossini. This is the type of drive here that makes champions, because Ashby is not running very well, but she's managing to get, uh, looks like she's going to be about 16th, 17th. Uh, no, 13th. That was 13th. Okay, it looks like everything is just beginning to cycle out, and Ashby is going to wind up, looks like 13th. And that's the type of drive that does uh, produce championships, is the ability to get a decent result when the cards are down. For someone, uh, Chris Davenport is someone for whom the cards usually seem to be down, and it's usually his own fault. Um, this year we've seen that from Davenport. We've seen him throw away a couple of results, usually in qualifying, um, because he does he has the he has been fast on occasions, but he's usually thrown it away doing something mindless, and speaking of not doing something, uh, speaking of the opposite of Chris Davenport, that would be Lev Azarov. Careful, patient, 
and uh, he's able to capitalize on the opportunities he's given. Uh, as Azarov is currently sitting inside the top 10 right now uh, in 10th place. So Lev Azarov could be a big, big day for Rus Autosport on home territory. As Alessandro Rossini is beginning to uh, hound uh, Ashby, he wants 13th back. And I think Rossini also realizes that Ashby is one of his main points contenders. Uh, and the other one is right behind him, Melanie Klaveno, but Klaveno is, is so many laps down that Rossini doesn't even have to worry about the two car. Rossini's gonna get the move done here. Yep, he's got it. Rossini back to 13. Lev Azarov, car number 07. Oh, off the course just a little bit there, as this race is really beginning to wind down. Uh, as he holds off Axel Andersen for the time being. This is a great run from Azarov. Uh, he's more or less an unknown. Uh, Rus Autosport more or less tapped him as their kind of their number two driver, really. Um, in the past, he was their guy who was uh, great in qualifying, but um, couldn't exactly, never really seemed to have the, the same kind of race pace that someone like a Kuznetsov had. Um, some people wonder what if Azarov might actually do a better job in a full-time ride because he is, uh, he does seem like he is a little bit more composed behind the wheel of a race car, but look at Andersson with a good move. He's, it looks like he's going to get um, Azarov off the chicane. He squeezes Azarov down a little bit. Going to be a drag race into the second chicane, and you don't really want to be where Azarov's running into the second chicane. And, oh, gonna, oh, they touch! They touch! Oh, that could have been a big, big crash, but Andersson made the move stick in... Uh, in that uh, second chicane there. Now, meanwhile, Chris Davenport is trying to hold off Alessandro Rossini. If there's anyone that Rossini might be a bit worried being behind, it's Davenport because he's usually the guy that whenever we're looking at him, it's generally not for anything good. Uh, Chris Davenport's had a messy career so far, but he does have a win under his belt that came at uh, Grand Detour last year. As Rossini, as you see there, he takes 11th or 12th position away from Chris Davenport, coming off the last corner without too many problems. But it is Luciano Savaral in car number five who looks set to break a winless streak of over a year and a half long. Last win was Grand Detour two years ago. Lenard is coming back into the series with Luciano Savaral, and they are both going to victory lane in Russia. Savaral. Takes car number five to victory lane. St Gaspar D'Souza's strategy pays off for a podium. Roderick third. Roderick actually nearly got D'Souza towards the end of the race. Kevin Dwyer, Ian Cooper in the top five. So Ian Cooper's strategy paid off. So did Scott Bates in the 88. Paul Lyons, great run to seventh on his return to the series. Scott Stoidler, Greg Woodard, and Axel Anderson complete the top ten. Lev Azarov has to settle for 11th. Rossini and uh, Chris Davenport, we caught that battle. Uh, coming to the white flag, Ashby uh, had to settle for 14th. Great runs by Chris Johans, the salvage of uh, what was a very poor uh, second stint for him. He made it all up in the third stint with a great drive. Davina Henson and Yulina Sova really fell through the field. Cameron Taylor and Packer Carroll complete the points finishers. Let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship with eight rounds in the books. Alessandro Rossini leads uh, rather convincingly over Melanie Claveno, Zelda Ashby, Adrian Devereaux, Scott Bates, the top five. Scott Bates uh, quietly having a solid run so far this season. He's tied with Leonard Roderick, of course. Arto Kakinen, uh, the pole sitter, didn't, uh, wasn't able to convert that into a win, which um, really I think that speaks more to Kessler's unreliability and how uh, poor their luck has been in general. Savaral and D'Souza are both beginning to turn their seasons around rather quick, and Kevin Dwyer and Greg Woodard are, are tied on 141 points. Woodard has been... Um, more dependable than his teammate Kirk Pliskin this year. David Krikorian and Yamino Tenshi are not full-time. Krikorian's 138 points come in two starts at the season opener and at Karyala and at Karyala where uh, Krikorian um, frankly dominated that race. Nasova and Henton, I think uh, Lynx Racing has effectively thrown in the towel as far as the championship goes for those two and that's a bit of a disappointment really. Carlos Raketa carries the flag for Katsev in uh, 17th in the championship. Ian Cooper, a solid uh, solid start to the year for him. And Packer Carroll, very solid uh, improvement for Packer and the Manicor engineering team. 
He's got himself 20th in the championship after eight races. Now let's have a look at the Independence Trophy. Uh, as it stands right now, Ryan Matthews still on top. We've got plenty of races still to go. You may notice that Griffith, uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Griffith and Azarov are sharing the 07. And um, this is going to be Azarov's only Independence Trophy run, so the rest of it falls on Anthony Griffith's shoulders. And uh, we go back a little bit further, you'll notice uh, Rob Nelson, Joao Paulo Vidal among the Independence Trophy cars that are still to run. The next time the series is in action will be a return to Germany.